he directed the army or the armed forces uh, to a surge of 10 million men. 10 million was a lot. Foreign policy. In 1918, when the revolution in Russia was going on, the U.S. invaded Russia. They sent thousands of men to Siberia where the royalists were holding up. And for 18 months, the U.S. had troops running around ready to rescue the, the Tsar of Russia. Unfortunately, he wasn't found to rescue. But after 1920, U.S. troops left Russia and refused to recognize Russia until 1935. In 1935, Roosevelt, in a bout of insanity, decided that if the U.S. trade with the Soviet Union, it would end the depression, like Russians wanted to buy a whole bunch of U.S. goods. And depression stricken Americans would buy stuff from Russia. What could Russia sell us if we wanted? Vodka. <laughs> Vodka. And those little men who you take the head off and there's a littler man inside. Russian right? brides. That's it. Maybe brides, but there weren't enough brides in the U.S. There wouldn't shoes. Mm. The little wooden men are the ones I remember. But I like to get from Russia. Pinups. The tariff was reduced by half to most countries, hoping that would stimulate trade. It didn't. Remember, the government got a lot of income from the fair. But here's the ones you need to think about, the neutrality act. The U.S. had its biggest ethnic group in 1935, the biggest ethnic group in 1935 was German Americans. There are at least four million we know about. Remember, up until the 90s, ethnic groups included all the different European ethnicities. They had a big club called the Bund that was sort of a, a German cultural club. You would go there, you'd get drinks, you'd have more drinks and say, God bless Germany. Um, the Neutrality Acts tried to keep the U.S. neutral in what seemed to be a coming war. They saw how Germany under Hitler was militarizing. They saw Italy doing the same thing, and they wanted to keep America out of it, especially the German Americans. So, no travel on belligerent ships. What does belligerent mean? Philip, what does belligerent mean? No? Uh, belligerent were um, people of countries who were at war. The belligerent ships were ships of countries who were already at war. And the Neutrality Act said, keep the Americans off. Because look what happened with the Lusitania. Look what happened with the Arabic. Somebody, some ship is sunk for being where somebody doesn't want it gets America into World War I and into World War II. Japanese didn't want American ships in the Pacific. For reasons we'll talk about in a minute. <coughs> Anybody who buys something from America pays for cash and pays in cash and carries it away on their own ship. And no loans and no arms sales. That's going to keep America out of the war. Now, here's the secret stuff that's been recently revealed. Japanese mandate. What is a mandate? No, no. No humor. What do you want? In World War I, 
the German islands in the Pacific out here, Saipan, the Marianas, the Marshalls, were a German colony. And when Germany lost World War I, the Germans moved out as administrators. Who got it? Well, under the San Remo Agreement of 1920, San Remo, a great resort in the Mediterranean, uh, on the time of the Mediterranean, uh, um, they agreed that Japan would receive the German colonies in the Pacific as a mandate. And the function of the mandate was Japan would prepare these islands for independence in 25 years. They teach them how to be independent and how to rule themselves. The Marianas, the Carolines, the Marshalls. Now under Japanese control, because Japan was the allies <coughs> ally during World War One. Both Japan and China sided with the U.S., Britain, France, and Italy in World War One, and that's the reward. Enter Colonel Pete Ellis, formerly of Iowa City. Colonel Ellis was interested in Pacific Islands. I guess anything is more interesting than Iowa. And one day he resigns as a colonel in the Marine Corps. He gets on the ship and he goes off to Saipan in the Mariana Islands. This is a Japanese held island. And he pretends to be a coconut trader. He sails through the mandates, the ones I just talked about, and goes back to Washington, where he writes a little book, Advanced Space Operations in Micronesia. And in that, he says the following. Contrary to law, the Japanese seem to be arming the mandates. Look at this. This area of the Pacific, here's the body over here, is suddenly a possible <coughs> enemy zone because it's being armed. And Americans are pretty careful about it. Well, why? Because it's right between Hawaii and our colony.